happiness and optimism are more contagious than unhappiness and depression. So um, oh. creating a team based on that, I, I think, is really important. So uh, one of the books he wrote was on was called um, Learned Optimism. And just really quickly, he, he had static electricity come through the cages these dogs were in. Some dogs in, in KJ could stop the electricity by, by poking this button with their snout. The dogs in the other cage couldn't stop their electricity. And so in the end, they just lie down helplessly. Then he took the dogs out of those cages, put them into an open cage. And so he put the dogs who could stop the electricity into the cage and into this open cage with a wall between two compartments. So he put a dog in there, electricity would start. The dog couldn't find the button to to stop the electricity, so just jump over the wall and get away from the electricity. But when he put the other dogs in to, to the same um, yeah. same little compartment, as soon as the electricity came, they just lay down. They didn't even think to jump over because they were helpless. And so he proved that that was a state. And then he he proved that optimism was was a key um, component of battling depression or helplessness. Wow. He, he worked out a way to, um, to determine where students came into Penn State University to determine whether they were optimists or whether they were pessimists. So he'd categorise them through a test that he set up. And then what he would do is take a group of optimists, he'd take a group of pessimists, and he'd take a group of learned optimists, that, that pessimists that he taught how to be optimists, and he followed them through life. Like, this is a 40-year 40, 40 study. Wow. And... Um, Overwhelmingly, the, the optimists and the learned optimists had less problems with depression and had more success in their jobs than, um, than the pessimists. So if you know that, why wouldn't you teach it to your family? 